Well, it looks like the first stop for the Magic Gus bus this year was at Transit in Black Ops 2. That, that Transit. You know, the one where the denizens are ripping the bus apart. It's going through lava. Everything just kind of sucks on the bus. That's basically what it was going through this game. It's like the bus went through transit. As, as the doors were being ripped off. As they were, like I said, going through lava. Hell, even the warden from Mob of the Dead came and picked up a hat trick. So the Wild lost to the Maple Leafs 7-4. to In um, Mob of the Dead slash transit slash Scotiabank Arena. Imagine if they made that into a zombie map. That'd be awesome. I don't know how they'd do it, but I'm pretty sure Toronto can figure it out. Anyway, not to sound like a 30 for 30 doc here, but what if I told you that this game was almost competitive? Yeah, crazy. I know. 7-4, to four, you think this game was long gone. And in some parts, it was like that. But there was hope. There was a chance. There was something magical that happened in this game. And I'm not talking about Austin Matthews' back-to-back -back hat tricks to start whooping the season. That is magical, but for the wrong reasons. Okay, the, the, the wrong team, wrong team won tonight. That, that's that's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, this game is a reminder that there are 80 more to go. I'm willing to put this game down as a mulligan, but there's also a few more things that need to be looked at or need to be addressed because. If we don't get them fixed, they will continue to plague us and just continue to be problems later down the line. It's just, it's just bad. So anyway, let's start from the beginning. The good news to start this game originally is that um, Marcus Johansson was back in the lineup. We were kind of worried about if he was actually going to play because he was taken out of last the last game for that accidental check to the head by one of the Florida Panthers rookies. He was back in this game. He looked fine, was doing good, and... All was good on that front. So that's a good start. Okay. And obviously, it's a it's a pseudo homecoming for a couple. Well, mainly just for two players. Revo and Klingberg. Both playing their former team that they barely spent any time with. Well, Revo more than Klingberg, but still. I really wish we still had Revo, especially with some of the stuff he did in this game. So, with 15-11 left in the first period toronto's tyler bertuzzi gets a tripping penalty so minnesota's on the power play that's what we want that's good that's amazing they move it around too it actually looks like a decent power play a pretty good power play doesn't score but it gets chances it, it generates opportunities that's what we want to see with 11 39 left to go in the first period however ryan reeves does what he does best nearly kills somebody on the other team he did it to whoever he killed in, in against Detroit with us. And now he reminded Freddie Goudreau what he does. Because it seems like anytime he's not on our team, he always either, he always manages to injure one of our guys. Luckily, this injury didn't last too long for Goudreau. He, would, he just got the wind knocked out of him. Or I think like a concussion or something. But he was gone for the whole first period after this hit. So he was gone for half the period after him from, from uh, Ryan Reeves. And luckily, Marcus Felino, his former buddy, says, yeah, no, I'm not taking this shit. You're, you're going to have to fight me through it. So good thing for Felino to actually stick up for Goudreau and fight Ryan Reeves. Both had mutual respect for each other. So I think that's good. Obviously, I still don't hate Reeves, but I'm just irritated that we don't have him anymore. But what's shocking about this game is that despite the score, we were the ones who got on the board first. And by we, I mean Ryan Hartman. Who got his first goal of the season? 932 into the first period. Assists go to Kaprizov and Brodine. Basically, Brodine gets it to Kaprizov at the blue line. Kaprizov just shoots it on net because shooting works. He shoots it on net, and a beautiful deflection in front from Ryan Hartman makes it a one-nothing game. It doesn't really silence a crowd at Scotia Bank, but it feels good to be on top pretty early. Anyway, that warden from Mob of the Dead decides, you know what? I'm gonna cash in now. Because my team needs me. And the denizens of Toronto Transit need me too. So he scores. He gets his fourth goal in two games at this point. So already he is his goals per game is two. Which is ridiculous. But he would add on more. But for now, this one is assisted by his good buddy, Mitch Marner. Who gets his second assist of the season. What happened on this one? 
Terrible clear by Jacob Middleton where he tries to get it past Mitch Marner and just kind of whiffs on it. Just kind of barely hits it anyway. Marner decides to make him pay by throwing it past Ryan Hartman and leaving Austin Matthews open in the slot. Need I say more? Just, just move on because there's even worse ones coming up. Because, yeah, what we're moving on to is another Austin Matthews goal. But before I get to the second one, this first one came on a four-on-three power play, which, let me look back at the penalties that were kind of assessed here. It was a strange set of circumstances. So yeah, at eight minutes left in the first period, Connor Dewar goes after Max Domi, like after the whistle. Both of them end up getting roughing penalties, so it's already a four-on-four. And then, less than a minute later, John Merrill gets an interference penalty. It was an obvious interference penalty. It was it was obvious. Oh my goodness. It's just at the worst times, the wild take penalties. At the worst possible times, we decide to put ourselves in the box. And with a power play like the Leafs, they're gonna make us pay. And they did. So that was the first goal for Austin Matthews. Or no, that was the second one. That put us on this power play. So the first one wasn't on the power play. This one was on a four-on-three power play. It's now 2-1 Leafs. Austin Matthews gets his fifth of the season. 12-35 into the first period. Assisted this time by William Nylander. Who gets his second assist of the season. So inter interference penalty by John Merrill makes it four-on-three. Nylander and Matthews just play catch. From the blue line to down low. Blue line to down low. And then Matthews just says, screw it, I'll just throw it on net. And somehow he scores. It's a five, it's a bad angle. He's barely above the goal line. And somehow it goes five hole on Philip Gustafson. It's a bad goal to give up. Like really bad. I can understand a deflection, but this one just seeps through him. It's just, it's rough. It's not a good goal. So that makes it 2-1 Maple Leafs. And if you watch the TikTok, you would hear that my old friend is back. You know, the old friend of giving up a goal in the last minute of a period. Because that happens here again. 3-1 Leafs. Nylander gets his second of the season. 1937 into the, into the first period. Which, that's 23 seconds left. 23 seconds left of the first period and the Wild couldn't hold. It's assisted... By Tavares, who gets his fourth assist of the season. And Max Domi, who picks up his first. So Domi passes it to Tavares. Tavares moves into the zone, passes it off to Nylander. And somehow, Tavares' presence is scary enough to spook both Middleton and Goligoski to go with him. Leaving William Nylander to just waltz in. Literally walk right in, right past the two defenders who decided John Tavares without the puck was more dangerous than William Nylander was with it. And it's, he just, yeah, he just runs right right through him. Easy goal to bury it late in the period. That's a backbreaker. It's an awful goal. Terrible goal to give up. But somehow, it gets worse. Oh, does it get worse? That may be the end of the first period by that point. And let me just make sure I didn't miss anything that happened in the first period as well. Oh, yeah, the only other thing that was here was... Kaprizov would had a ridiculous amount of chances in this game, like a lot of two-on-ones that went his way, and it was still relatively close despite the fact that the score was getting further and further away from the Wild. Kaprizov had multiple chances. Zuki was setting him up pretty nicely. The shocking thing was Kaprizov had the worst plus-minus out of any Wild player. He was minus three on the night, yet a few others that I checked were somehow minus one. <clears throat> John Merrill which I find to be absurd that Kaprizov, who was actually getting chances and generating opportunities, had a worse plus minus than John Merrill, who was on or directly responsible for a good chunk of these goals. But then again, there were three main defensemen that screwed up tonight. But anyway, that was all for the first period. Second period, I, it still gets worse. Because in the second period, immediately right off the bat, Alex Goligoski gets a tripping penalty. And just like that, the Wild, again, are back on the penalty kill. And against the Leafs, they'll be 
make you pay. This time, it's Tyler Bertuzzi who gets his first goal as a Leaf. He gets hit 335 into the second period, assisted by Jan Croak and Morgan Riley. So Morgan Riley ends up walking in. He fires it over to Jan Croak, who's over on the side of the net, and he just like gift wrapped, tees it up for him beautifully. It's almost like he like pool cued this shit. He didn't even have to hit it that hard. Yarn Croak, eh, there you go. Gives it right to him. And Bertuzzi, just like a caveman, just whacks at it. And it's it's going in. It they're they're two feet away from Gustafson. Nobody, I get it's a power play or a pen, a power play for the Leafs, but somebody has to pick him up. And nobody did. And so just like that, it's 4-1. Well, finally, somebody on the wild said the bleeding has got to stop. We need to end this. And so as they're announcing the fourth goal for the Leafs, Matt Boldy gets his first of the year in incredible fashion. Like I said, as they were announcing it. So Boldy gets his first goal, 4-0-9 into the second period. And it's assisted by Zuccarello, who gets his second of the season. And Addison, who gets his first assist of the season. So Addison breaks it out to Boldy. Boldy passes to Zuki. Zuki drops past it back to Boldy. And Boldy just snipes it right over Samsonov's shoulder. As they are announcing the Leafs' fourth goal. So the bleeding stops. And it's now 4-2 Minnesota. So that's the competitive part. That's the what if I told you. That's what I meant. Right there. And luckily, things continued to get better. The Wild generated more chances. Things were starting to go our way. And then the one thing that I that should have happened last game, frankly, but it finally happened. Marco Rossi, after all the BS he has been put through, all of the just bad luck he has been given, he finally gets rewarded. And he finally gets his first NHL goal. It's 9.51 into the second period. It's assisted by Felino and Faber, both of whom get their first assist of the year with that one. So f- this, this play all starts with Brock Faber and gives me hope for the rest of this team and the rest of our rookies. If they look like Brock Faber, they we are winning the cup. It's as simple as that. Because Brock Faber actually generates the plays. He actually drives the play. And by driving, he drives to the net. So he starts off this play on the bench, flies off of that, jamming his stick on the ground, trying to just get the pass over to him. He gets it, wheels around the zone, drives straight to the net. Eventually, somebody's got to make a move, so Sansonov has to poke check it to do something. Felino gets the rebound, fires it back at him, still bouncing around, and just like, just like he was playing baseball, he just bats it out of the air. And by he, I mean Marco Rossi, because he was dogfighting in front of the whole net, making sure he wasn't losing this chance. He's dogfighting, eventually bats it into the net, and the celebration was so good because Faber and Felino both knew it's this kid's first NHL goal. Felino picks the puck out of the net, and finally, Marco Rossi gets rewarded with an NHL goal. Oh, that's he, It's so good because at this point, I low-key thought we might win this. That's what I'm thinking. Marco Rossi finally gets that. That's huge. Huge play for the bench, and the momentum is starting to be almost all on our side. That's how good it is. We take this into the second period. We take it or in the second intermission is what I meant, and we just dominate. It felt like we were dominating in that second half, and we're like, oh, this could this could turn on the Leafs. They blow a 3-1 lead. This could be bad. And then we get to the third period. It's... First off, it just becomes a fun, exciting game to watch because at 17.32 left in the third period. So three minutes in, three minutes into the first period, both teams are going down the ice back and forth, getting multiple chances and just trying their damnedest to make sure nobody else screws up on either side. It was fun to watch. Exciting, scary. Heart rate was definitely going up, but... It was fun to watch, and that's that's what matters. And then at 13-17, well, 13-17 left in the third period. Easily the dumbest call I've ever seen in any sport happens. And considering Goligoski already didn't have a good night, this one is not his fault. Because I don't think I've ever seen in the NHL chirping be called as a penalty. But in this case, it was. 
Goligoski picks up an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for talking. He, he, it's, it's absurd. It's absurd to look at because this one, I remember the bad calls in last year's playoffs. I'd argue this one's way worse than those. And those ones were already pretty bad, so much so that the NHL said they got it wrong. This one was a ref just abusing his power. It, plain and simple. There is no reason to call to call Goligoski for just talking. He didn't hit anybody. There was no malicious intent. There was no cheap shot after the play. He just skated to his own bench. Can you imagine that? Literally, Goligoski had his First Amendment rights just taken away from him and got sent to the box for two minutes just for talking. For moving his mouth. When it happens in every sport, in every single sport, this stuff happens. And for some reason, un it ha he had to like called out his mother or something or said something explicitly about the ref that made him do it. Because if that wasn't it, and even if that was, like, are you serious? This is a, oh my God. If you can find footage of it, you'll be just as dumbfounded as I am because I, 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 I I was speechless when I saw it, and somehow, so the, the Leafs get a, a power play off of that. They get a power play off of that awful call, terrible call, BS call. D insert terrible adjective here. It was like you check out the video; it's brutally bad. Leafs get a power play out of that. Somehow they don't score, but what they do is generate a hell of a lot of momentum and just steal it away from the Wild. Now everything is going in favor of the Leafs because all the chances are doing that. They finally are close to getting one in on Gustafson again. And at that point, the floodgates open. That is when this doesn't become a game and this becomes an onslaught for the Maple Leafs. It, it's just absurd. So eventually they kill it off, but Callie Yarncroak gets his first goal of the season. 9.54 into the third period, assisted by Morgan Riley, who gets his third assist of the season, and TJ Brody, who gets his first assist of the season. And this play all starts with a turnover in the Leafs zone, specifically a play in which Morgan Riley rubs off Matt Boldy on the wall. Matt Boldy did not return to the game after that happened because he was clutching his shoulder and went down the tunnel immediately as he got back to the bench. But because he lost the puck in their zone, Morgan Riley gets it to TJ Brody. Brody. Then at the point, feeds it to Morgan Riley down low. Morgan Riley feeds it on the back door to Callie Yarncroke to, to just tap in. Jacob Middleton was supposed to have Callie Yarncroke somehow with one guy already on Morgan Riley. For some reason, Jake Middleton decides, you know what? I'm going to let Yarncroke sneak past me. Loses him. Puck goes right to him, and Yarncroke has a tap in back door, even though there is a physical body there. So already, you, you can kind of sense a theme here about just the problem with a few of our guys on defense. Middleton's one of them, Golagotsky's another, and John Merrill is another. Those three were awful tonight. And they, again, I will say not all of it is on them. Gus obviously did not play well tonight. There were a few goals that he definitely should have had or at least gotten a hand on. He didn't even get a hand on some of these. But let's go back to that, okay? So if Middleton loses Yarncroke on the back door, he scores. It's 5-3 Maple Leafs now. So, again, it's like, okay, it's kind of getting iffy. And if that wasn't the dagger, then the next one definitely was. Because guess who gets it? The Warden of the Mob of the Dead. I don't know, that name's not going to stick. I don't think of him as a Warden. But Austin Matthews. He gets his second hat trick. In back-to-back -back games. Yeah, hat-trick in back-to-back -back games to start the season. It's like him, Alexander Ovechkin, and a few other people that have ever done that. And it this sixth goal was awful to watch. Not because Austin Matthews is bad, but because Philip Gustafson was bad on this one. This one is all Gus's fault. Despite the fact that defense could have helped him out, no, Gus should have definitely had this. So, Matthews gets his... Sixth of the season in two games. Guy's a freak. 
10.25 into the third period, so it was pretty quickly after the fifth one. They were starting to rack up immediately. Marner, again, assists him. His third assist of the season. So, Zuccarello gets his pocket picked in the corner by Mitch Marner, who then feeds it to Austin Matthews behind the net. Matthews, on his backhand, drives around the net, just backhanded, and somehow throws it far post on Philip Gustafson, even though he is behind the net and has to curve around just like that. He gets it on the far post over here, even though there's a body in the middle. There is a body in the middle of all of that. And it's, it's ter- like, I saw it and I'm like, he gave that up? That's an awful goal. Like, I, Jack Campbell could have saved that and Jack Campbell gave up eight. It was, it was just bad. And it, it's at that moment where I knew this night's over. This night's over. I'm just going to watch for anything extracurricular and hope that more of our guys don't get injured. Lo and behold, I'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, bad goal to give up by Gus. That one was pretty bad. Two minutes later, roughly, William Nylander gets his third goal of the season, his second of the night, 12-14 into the third, assisted by, hey, look at that, John Klingberg, his third assist of the season, and Tavares gets his fifth of the season. So Tavares gets it off the boards in his own zone. He passes it to Klingberg with a long lead pass to William Nylander, who just snipes Gus Blocker side. Hey, I also think Gus should have had this because there was no traffic in front of him. But, jeez. At that point, I knew that the floodgates were opened, and this game is going to require, you know, some of this or whatever you can find. But, yeah, at that point, this game was over. Somehow, because I was still watching be- to make sure that one, nobody was injured, and two, if I really did miss something and there was a possibility of a comeback, call me delusional, but that's the way it goes, I decided to keep watching. And apparently I missed a, or I didn't miss it, but there was a really weird goal given to Matt Duhame. It wasn't given, but he, he scored it. So Duhame get it, gets his first of the year, 1732 into the third period. So roughly three minutes left. Assisted by Connor Dewar, first of the season, and Middleton, his first of the season. The only thing I think he did right tonight was getting that assist. Other than that, Middleton did not play good. Anyway, it's a bouncing puck from the blue line that just kind of <laughs> bump, bump, bounces over to Duhame, who's fighting in front with somebody, but he just says, screw it, I'm just going to whack it through the wickets. Not only did he whack it through his wickets, he whacked it through Samsonov's wickets, apparently. So that goal somehow gets through Samsonov as well, who, I'll be honest, wasn't playing good either. It's mainly just which goaltender sucked less or which team sucked less. And it was the Leafs tonight. But they, yeah, somehow it just goes through Samsonov, Samsonov's legs. And it's 4-7 with three minutes left. Nothing happened. Don't worry. They didn't come back. He didn't miss much. So, yeah. The play Boldy got hurt directly led to the Leafs' fifth goal. The second Leafs' power play goal was from a Galagoski tripping penalty on Domi, the only one of the second period, mind you. Boldy's goal was while they were announcing the Leafs' fourth goal, and Marco Rossi finally got his first NHL goal. It took forever, and he had so much BS go against him that he finally deserves to be rewarded. And the least fifth goal was momentum from a call that shouldn't have happened. That was the, again, if you can find footage of this call on, on Alex Goligoski, this one's not his fault. This one was just dumb. It's a stupid call. And if that gets called in the playoffs, there's a possibility that ref not only gets fired, but has a whole massive army of people trying to go against him. Like, that's... That's what I think. Like, if this call went against the Leafs, you you know damn well that guy's never never doing a Leafs game ever again. Ever. But even with that call not going our way, the Leafs still dominated tonight. And that's just the way it goes. Let's hope we get out of transit because our next game is against Montreal. So let's hope Gold Caulfield doesn't go crazy on us. But anyway, that's the recap for tonight. Hopefully things get better, like I said. But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe because there's going to be more of them. If you like it, yeah, click like. If you don't like it, well, then don't watch it because don't harm yourself like that. And I will see you all later. Peace.